Hello there spinners and welcome to today's Future Spouse Pick a Card reading with me, the High Maintenance Hippie. And in today's reading I want to find out how your future spouse is going to show and express their jealousy. Today's reading is an on the fly reading so I will be shuffling on camera and I want to say hey and give a big shout out to the wonderful viewer who suggested this video today. So if you want to find out the juicy details and find out how your future spouse is going to show and express their jealousy within your marriage, I need you to pick one of these three piles. Pile number one, we have the four of wands. Pile number two is the ten of wands. And pile number three is the six of wands. I highly recommend that you go with your first gut instinct. Spirit is going to guide you towards the pile which has the most relevant information for you. And once you've chosen your pile, I shall see you in your reading. Hello there gorgeous part number one, welcome to your reading. Let's find out how your future spouse is going to show and express their jealousy. So you guys chose the four of wands and straight away these bright pink flowers are popping out to me. So I don't know whether you've got a strong connection with the colour bright pink. Maybe this is one of your favourite colours, maybe this is a colour that you love to wear. It's a very eye-catching colour. I absolutely adore this colour, but I personally can't wear it because I've got a very blue skin tone. And if I wear this colour, it's the outfit wearing me, not me wearing the outfit. But for you guys, this colour could really make you pop in some way. It could make your skin tone pop. It could make your eyes pop or your hair pop. There's something very glamorous about this colour as well, which makes me think that you are somebody who's naturally very glamorous. I can see sunglasses with you guys as well. So you could be the kind of person who likes to wear sunglasses on days where you don't feel like you've had enough sleep or you've had like a bit of a late night. And it doesn't matter whether it's the middle of winter. Like you're like, I don't care. I'm still going to wear my sunglasses. Now, if you're not resonating with this very glamorous energy, I do want to say there is a glamour pus inside of you that's literally dying or like desperate to come out. I'm seeing something around pageantry here as well. So you could be somebody who has been in beauty pageants previously. Even It could even be like the most beautiful baby pageantry when you were younger, or it could be some kind of like fitness competition as well, okay? So we're looking at beauty pageantries and fitness competitions too. I do want to say that potentially you guys, something around your mother or like an auntie or a female figure within the family who's very glamorous. This could be somebody who's really inspired you when it comes to like your appearance and the way that you dress yourself and the way that you present yourself. Maybe you even have like a mother or a grandmother or an auntie who's like a model, maybe you model. There's something around like old school beauty as well. So I don't know whether this is a female within your family who maybe was a model, an actress, or did something very kind of showy. Because I'm seeing like this shorter kind of curly hair and this like red lip now. So I don't know whether you are into that those kind of styles. It's very like classic beauty or classic actress kind of beauty. I know there's a better way of describing that, but I can't think of the phrase or the words to use right now, but like 1940s actress, very Marilyn Monroe-esque. So I don't know whether that is your style or whether it is somebody in your family who has that style or whether you literally are related to somebody who was, you know, very famous and very glamorous in those days. So they're on cards as well. I don't know whether you're somebody who likes to play cards, likes to play poker. That's coming up very, very strongly here. I'm also getting like, reading tarot reading with playing cards and i'm also getting solitaire on the computer coming through here as well i don't know whether your favorite color when you meet your future spouse is going to be this very bright fuchsia is it fuchsia pink fuchsia pink <laughs> i'm not too sure and their favorite color is going to be yellow there's something very bold about you both you and your future spouse I think you could be quite loud naturally and i think they could be quite loud and chatty naturally as well and i think you're going to have this in common you're the kind of couple who stand out in the crowd. I can just see you both wearing very bold colours. I can see you both wearing like sunglasses and just looking like a pair of like really cool people. Like if you guys were together in school, you'd be like the popular couple. The couple that is like the prom queen and the prom king is what's coming to mind very, very strongly now. I don't know whether you're a fire sign or whether they're a fire sign. So that's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Getting Scorpio coming through very strongly here as well. Scorpio second house is coming through. Scorpio south node is coming through, which would make you a Taurus north node. If you do resonate to the Scorpio south node. 
south node in the second house. And yeah, that's what I'm getting here for you guys. When it comes to your energy right now, I definitely feel like you could be going through some kind of, like, I want to say, like, transition. There's something about you levelling up that's coming through very, very strongly. Could be a sudden change of some kind. A sudden ending to a relationship. A sudden move when it comes to your home. Or a sudden career change. Something very suddenly is happening for you. It's like it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. But whatever this is, it is really pushing you into a better place. It's pushing you into somewhere where you're going to gain better opportunities. And I do think it's really pushing you. Just cut the deck towards this king of wands here, which I personally believe is your future spouse. Because I did mention the fire signs and the king of wands is that like Leo energy in particular. But we are also looking at Aries and Sagittarius energy for your future spouse as well. I don't see you seeing you really coming into your own. I don't know whether you've recently started having an interest in astrology. There's something about you where previously I think you may have not liked standing out from the crowd. <clears throat> I'm feeling this very strongly because I feel like your your physical appearance is very unique. Could be looking at something around the eyes. Maybe you've got very big eyes or intense eyes. Maybe you've got wide set eyes. There's something around you looking very unique. And when you were younger, all you wanted to do was blend in. You felt very uncomfortable about your uniqueness when it comes to your physical appearance. And your older years, maybe just now, you're starting to really accept that uniqueness and realising that it doesn't make you different, doesn't make you weird. It makes you iconic. And your future spouse is going to come into your life at a time where you really, really do accept the way that you physically look. And when you accept your individuality... Because your future spouse loves individuality. It's giving me that Leo energy again. They like people who are shiny and different and who make them look great and make them look bigger and more glamorous. And that's you. There's something around you meeting your future spouse as well when you're out with friends. Now, I don't know whether your future spouse is going to approach you when you're out with friends in a physical way or whether they're going to send you that first cheeky DM when you're out with friends. And there's something very karmic around your future spouse coming in, which makes me think that there's going to be an issue with your ex at the time. Maybe you will have recently split up with an ex, or maybe you will have an ex who's trying to come back into your life, and this future spouse coming in is like a little bit of like a kick in the balls or kick in the vag for your ex. I don't know whether it's because your ex knows your future spouse or knows of your future spouse, because I am getting like very... like. It's not going to be for everybody, but I'm getting quite famous energy. And whenever I bring fame up, I can go from anything from like A-list to Z-list, okay? You can go from A-list celeb or you could be somebody who is very, very well known in your community, okay? But there could be something very like famous around your future spouse or your, your ex knows them in that way or in that kind of capacity. Or it could just be that your future spouse is somebody who's very, very desirable. They're very successful, very attractive, very loud, very unapologetic. And your ex, when they find out that your future spouse has came into your life, your ex is just, just like, it's game over for me, isn't it? <laughs> like, I'm not going to have a chance with part number one. Now, this person's came in and it is like a real kick in the teeth for them. But I do think this ex in particular that I'm picking up on deserves that kick in the teeth. And that's why your future spouse comes in and they're very karmic for your ex. Because maybe your ex hasn't had their karma yet, but they are going to get their karma when your future spouse walks into your life. Right. So how will your future spouse show their jealousy? And what kind of thing spirit is going to make our partner one's future spouse the most jealous? Okay. I think your future spouse <sighs> Look, you're somebody who's very very desirable here for sure. And I feel like your future spouse is going to have to constantly battle against people who are pining over you, people who fancy you, people who are waiting for you to break up with your future spouse so that they can nuzzle in and get a piece of you. I think there's a lot of people out there who look at you as wifey material or husband kind of material. And it really does pee your future spouse off because I want to say that your future spouse is somebody who has like a lot of like self-respect. So they don't like it when other people disrespect them. And other people coming into your life 
and trying to come on to you when they know that your future spouse is around really, really does get on your future spouse's nerves. I really do feel like your future spouse will show off online a lot. They're the kind of people who, when they get a new car, they're going to show it. When they get a new house, they're going to show it. Okay, and they're going to really show it off. They're also going to really show you off as well. Because they want everybody to know what they've got. They want everybody to know that they're like, you know, a big dog, okay? I wouldn't be surprised if your future spouse is somebody who is a creative. I wouldn't be surprised if your future spouse is somebody who is very well known online and gets a lot of attention online. There's something around your future spouse, particularly wanting to post like pictures of you guys being intimate online. And I don't mean anything as the actual, I just mean you guys kissing, you guys hugging. They want people to catch like pictures of you guys being very candid together. I think they've got a very strong kind of like romantic vision of what your relationship should be like. And I think they really do artistically play out their romantic vision of your relationship on the internet with art, with videos and things like that. This is somebody who really does put you on a pedestal. This is somebody who really does show you off. And even though they're doing this because they love you and they're proud of you, they're also doing this because of their own jealousies. Where if anybody comes into your life and they try and like steal you off your future spouse, your future spouse can just point them in the direction of their social media or your social media and go, mm -hmm. like you ain't got a chance. Look how happy she is with me or look how happy he is with me. They're also somebody who will purchase jewelry for you, clothes for you, handbags for you, shoes for you. This is somebody who's really into fashion themselves, by the way, but they really like you to look the part, but they also buy you these possessions because it's an ownership they have over you. So that when you're out and you're away from them, a little piece of them is always with you. It's like a respect thing as well. They don't expect you to disrespect them if you're wearing that necklace, bracelet and earrings that they've bought you, or if you're wearing that expensive handbag that they've bought you. They don't expect you to disrespect them because you are respectfully wearing a piece of them, if that makes sense. So they will want to buy you things. I'm feeling jewellery especially here. They really do feel ownership over you when they buy you jewellery. A very expensive, very shiny and very flashy jewellery. Your future spouse is actually the kind of person where they would be very happy for you to get a tattoo of their face on your body, somewhere very visible as well. So you can just go, oh, th yeah, that's my husband, mm, that's my wife. Actually, I can actually see something very artistic now of there being like, if you're a male looking for a female, maybe you'd want like a pinup tattoo of your wife. Or if you're a woman looking for a man, like they may literally be like, Again, song lyrics coming through now. So this could literally be your future spouse wanting you to have a tattoo on you which represents them. So this could be like their face. It could be something quite creative within like a sleeve or something like that. It could be initials or it could be song lyrics. Song lyrics that mean something to you both or maybe their song lyrics. So you can say, oh, hey, like, do you recognize these lyrics? Yeah, that's my future spouse. That's his music. Like, I said, there's like, there's fame in this energy. Okay, so... Mm. see what else I don't know whether your future spouse was put down a lot as a child I don't know whether your future spouse was bullied when they were younger I don't know whether your future spouse has faced a lot of adversity I don't know whether they've had a previous relationship where they were really disrespectful because there's something around disrespect really really triggering your future spouse like they cannot even take like the tiniest bit of disrespect and they've got no issues with you because you're never going to disrespect them you're super Loyal. Your future spouse could have had a Virgo parent, somebody who pushed them to be better and better and better. When it comes to Virgo energy, especially in the shadow side, it's like nothing's ever good enough kind of energy. So this could be why your future spouse is at the top of their game because they were pushed by a parent to be better. In all honesty, most Earth parents are a bit like this, but it could be their parents and their upbringing and this nothing's ever good enough kind of energy that made them as successful as they are today. But when it comes to their personal life and when it comes to them in love and their physical appearance and things like this, potentially they still have that energy where they feel like nothing is ever good enough. There's somebody who's very spiritual. And as I said, that soulmates has came out. There's somebody who's very spiritual. There's somebody who is looking for true love, somebody who's looking for that unconditional love. 
And this takes me back to their parents. I don't think they ever got that unconditional love from their parent. I think their parent, of course, they unconditionally loved them. Of course, of course, of course. But I don't think they ever shown that unconditional love. I think it was very, a very dry upbringing for your future spouse. So they're looking for that very soft, loving and emotional connection that they may have lacked as a child. And I think if anything comes in to kind of sever that beautiful emotional attachment that they have with you, they really are going to like bring the claws out. They really are going to bring the sting around because they really are going to protect your connection fiercely. But I don't think this is the kind of person to be face to face kind of confrontational. I just think this is the kind of person to be very passively confrontational and they do it by continuously showing everybody how flipping fabulous they are, how much money they have, how much success they have, how attractive they are and so on and so on. They're a flexor. The main way that you know that your future spouse is jealous is because they are going to flex to D-E-A-T-H. Flex to death. Okay then. I'm going to leave that there, part number one. This is just a little short one today. I really hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope you resonate in some way. If you did like this reading, be sure to drop it a like. And if you do like content like this, please subscribe and comment down below if you have anything that you want to say. I absolutely adore reading your messages um, and I appreciate you all so, so much. Take care of yourselves, part number one, and I shall see you next time. Bye. What's good, part number two? Welcome to your reading. Let's find out how your future spouse will show and express their jealousy. So you guys chose the Ten of Wands. Now this tells me that you are somebody who puts a lot of work into everything that you do. You put the utmost energy into everything that you do. You're somebody who's very ambitious. You're somebody who is always out to succeed. And I do think sometimes you can be prone to staying on one track and being so determined on one track where you're blinkered on a certain goal that you miss other paths which could either lead to that goal quicker or lead somewhere that's a bit more beneficial and more in line for you. So I do want to say that potentially you have recently decided to come off track and go in a new direction. And if that is the case and you are resonating with this, I do want to say that this is the right direction for you. You have made the right choice. I definitely see something new coming in, whether this be a new love or whether this be like a new kind of se actual kind of partner or se actual romance, or whether this be something new coming in that you're very, very passionate about. And I do feel like whatever this is, is going to lead to like a rising like the phoenix moment for you. I don't know whether you've recently been in a bit more of like a heavy energy and you're only just starting to feel like you're coming out of it. And it could be because you have changed your perspective on something or switched your path in some kind of way. Or somebody comes in and they kind of ignite you with that fire and that spark for life again. I want to say that you could have like red hair or naturally auburn hair. I do think some of you may be thinking about dyeing your hair red or auburn for the autumn or the fall because that is on its way if you live in the northern hemisphere. Yes, we're in the northern hemisphere, aren't we? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not great with geography. I do feel that there's something around red and you in particular. I feel like the colour red is the colour that's going to really attract in your future spouse and you may find that your future spouse is somebody who likes red hair, likes the red lip, likes a red dress. I actually feel that they've got like a little bit of like a kinky fantasy for the colour red. It makes me think that your future spouse could be Aries but you could also have some Aries in your chart as well. I'm getting Virgo here, I'm getting Gemini here and I'm getting Leo here as well. We could also be looking at a Aries and Mercury a Virgo in Mercury, Gemini in Mercury. We could be looking at Mercury in the fifth house, or we could be looking at an Aries fifth house for you guys as well. There's something very ambitious about you and your future spouse. You both share this very strong passion for life and very strong passion to succeed. I wanna say that you both have success in common. You could be into sports, competitive sports, there's something around children as well, so I don't know whether you have children or whether your future spouse is going to have children. I feel like if you have a child, or if your future spouse already has a child, so this does make me think that there is going to be set children when it comes to your marriage. This child is very, very chatty, very lovable, very witty, and very chatty. 
Yeah, I really do think that you've recently found balance within your life after a heavy period or a tough time. And I think this balance is because you have changed your perspective in some kind of way or changed your direction in some kind of way. And for some of you, it could be a relationship. A relationship that you were in and you thought this is for life. And then some circumstances happened or you suddenly had a change of perspective and a change of mind and you ended up going in a different route and in a different direction. And maybe this has been a bit of a shock for you. But this change of route or this uprooting is very, it's very spiritually guided. You may have been getting signs to make this change, like about, I even want to say two years before you actually made the change. A year or two years before you made the change. I don't know whether you have tattoos as well. You could have tattoos on the legs specifically or on like the collarbone as well. I do feel like you're sick to death of fighting your own battles and you're ready to team up is what I'm hearing here very strongly. It's like I'm sick of being the lone wolf. I'm sick of being the person who carries all of the burden. And if you're a single parent, this makes a lot of sense as well because you're ready to have somebody to support you through your parenting journey. I can see that you may meet your future spouse through a family event, potentially, if you know that you've got any family events coming up. Or this could be a private event, maybe a wedding. Because it definitely looks here that you find new love unexpectedly at a time where you're out with like friends. Maybe you go to somebody's wedding, maybe you get invited to a wedding and you take like a friend as a plus one, like one of your female buddies as a plus one. If you are a female, if you're a male, you take one of your male buddies and you're just going for a good time and then you end up actually meeting your future spouse at this event or wedding or this family event here. Because that's coming up so, so strongly. Ring. I'm seeing a wedding ring on this Ace of Cups' finger here. So that is giving me like extra clarification that this could be a wedding a family wedding or a friend's wedding but I do think this wedding is going to be in the countryside it could be in like quite a big manor house an old period building look out for um peacocks as well so yeah I did say Aries energy for your future spouse I'm also getting Leo energy for your future spouse and I'm getting water sign energy for your future spouse as well so that would be Cancer Scorpio and Pisces here too for your future spouse I did mention rising like the phoenix and that people are going to notice you rise like the phoenix. You are going to rise like the phoenix again. And I've just noticed on this Ace of Cups card, there is a phoenix on the Ace of Cups, which makes me think that after this rising like the phoenix moment, that is when your future spouse comes in. So bear in mind, if you've already been through this phoenix moment, your future spouse isn't far away at all. Let's see what makes your future spouse jealous. <laughs> this came out for Paul, number one as well. Boundaries, someday. Okay. Illuminate. I think you, I think you definitely have some strong Aries in your chart. It could be in your big three, it could be a cheeky little Jupiter, it could be an Aries North Node, it could be an Aries Mercury, as I've already mentioned. But I think there's something around you being very magnetic. I think a lot of people notice you. Oh my gosh. I've just realized red hair in every single one of these cards. There's something around the color red for you, most certainly. You, you may meet your future spouse when you wear like a red wig or you dye your hair red. You're somebody who really does stand out in the crowd. And I think this is very energetically. I think you're somebody who looks very interesting. And I think people are very intrigued to come up to you, to speak to you, to find out more about you. I do sense a little bit of like a tomboy energy with you as well. So if you are a feminine, maybe you do have like a masculine element to you. Now you don't have to look like a tomboy or dress like a tomboy. You could just generally have like a, like, or be very strong in your masculine energy. I did say you could be somebody who's into fitness and things like that and competitive sports. So yeah, you could be somebody who does get on with the lads if you are a female in particular. You know, you've got a lot of lad mates. And I do think that when it comes to your future spouse, yeah, I'm sensing the lad mates here very, very strongly. I'm sensing it's very hard for you to find somebody attractive. I'm sensing it's very hard for you to actually find anyone that you'd be interested in dating, anyone that you'd be interested in sleeping with and anybody that you'd be interested in settling down with. 
I think when it comes to like celebrity crushes and things like that, I don't think you have many, if any. You could be the kind of person that it's like, there's a lot more than just a physical, there's a lot more than the physical appearance for you when you're interested in somebody. It has to be like a mind, body and soul connection for you to actually be interested in somebody. So you could easily speak to somebody at a party or at work or whatever um, with a very, very, very pretty face, but it doesn't mean that you're actually attracted, that you actually want to go there with that person. Now, your future spouse, they are going to have a little bit of confusion because clearly you're somebody who gains a lot of attention, but you're also somebody who has an innocence when it comes to this attention because you know that you can't be steered away from your future spouse. So you will happily have a little chat, very politely decline people who, you know, are interested in you. You know, you're the kind of person to be like, oh, do you know what? Like, like yeah, I'll talk to you about this subject that you're talking to me about. But then when you come on to me, like, I'm going to have to tell you, you know, like, I've got a husband or I've got a wife or, you know, I'm taken. You'll happily have like a little bit of a chat and a little bit of a banter because to you, it's very harmless. Now, your future spouse, and they're definitely giving me Aries and water sign energy now very strongly as well they do have like a bit of an issue with this because i think at the beginning of your relationship this is probably before you get married they are not going to know the difference between you being friendly and you being flirty and i do think they are going to realize that your friendliness they've misconstrued that for flirtiness okay so i do think this is all going to get cleared up but there is an element here at the beginning i think they're asking you to have more boundaries when it comes to you connecting with the gender that you are se actually interested with and i do think you have like such a friendliness about you and you're so accommodating to people that i think other people end up falling in love with you and i think this is where your future spouse gets a little bit like because they're just like oh my god like my part number two can have get anybody to fall in love with them. What is stopping my part number two just stopping and leaving one day for one of these people? So I think they get very jealous around this. The fact that you can create a rapport with random people very well. You can create a rapport with people who are very attractive and very well to do and who would be good catches for you, part number two. And I think within the marriage, you're the kind of person to you know speak to a hottie or something if you are at an event or at a bar or something and go back to your future spouse and go oh my god I was speaking to this hottie but like it was such a bore like there's something very honest about you as well like you're very honest about everything you're honest about things that people would kind of cringe at just like whoa how could you be so honest about that to your to your future spouse or to your partner but you see that honesty as a level of respect as a show of respect and you have that honesty because you genuinely have absolutely nothing to hide because you're not doing anything wrong and you're not going to do anything wrong. So I think there's an element here of them getting very jealous, even though they know that they're safe with you, even though they know that you're not going to do anything behind their back, they've still got to kind of sleep with one eye open, if you know what I mean. So your interactions with other people, as innocent as it is, there's a jealousy there. So that tends to make your future spouse very, very jealous. I even want to say your future spouse can get jealous about like, the same gender as you, even if you're not actually interested in the same gender. <laughs> now, how your future spouse shows their jealousy. I feel like your future spouse literally just steamrolls in. Your future spouse is the kind of person, and this is why I think you share this Aries energy, your future spouse is the kind of person to steamroll in and literally tell whoever it is that's crossing your boundaries or crossing their boundaries by coming close to you, telling them to F off, telling them to back off. You will know when your future spouse is jealous because they will show anger. They will show aggression. And they're not going to take that aggression out on you. They're going to be like, give me their number. Show me where they are. I'm going to tell them to back the F off. And I do think to a certain extent you like this because genuinely you are the kind of person who probably has been through many 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 phases in your life where you've had to protect yourself and you've had nobody to protect you so you absolutely love the fact that your future spouse is so protective and you know that like you've got like a guard dog for the rest of your life when it comes to your future spouse but you know that they're jealous because they will show this level of anger and they will show this level of like i don't give a crap i don't give a crap if the whole club is watching me tell this man to back the f away from my bird is what I want to say very strongly. So I don't know whether this is somebody who uses the word bird or whether you use the word bird that's like, back off my bird. Like, I'm just hearing that very, very strongly here. 
and they will physically take you away from these people as well. They will physically remove you from places. They will say, right, we're going home right now because that person over there has been staring at you for the past half an hour. And I know this sounds like really, really controlling, but genuinely you wouldn't be with this person if you couldn't handle it, if you didn't have a level of control over it. I think you most certainly have the power within this relationship to say, no, let's not leave, let's just calm this down. Because I'm actually seeing here with this card with the Ten of Wands, there's a fire in the mountains, but there is a river running through the fire. So you are probably one of the only people who actually has the ability to tone down your future spouse's um, like anger when they get a bit heated. The positive side of this with their anger is the fact that they have so much passion and so much fire within them that yes, they can get very angry and very kind of like alpha kind of, um, very alpha <laughs> Um, But also when they use that in the bedroom, like they're, mm, they're a very, very good and passionate lover. Let me just pick up what we've got here. Your future spouse is like literally addicted to you. And I do think they're actually somebody who's very much into their fitness. I think they're somebody who's very much into like having a very healthy diet as well. I think you come into your future spouse's life and you like are a little bit of a savior. Now I definitely think that you're a savior for each other. I think they come into your life and they bring you the protection that you've always desired. But I think you come into their life and you make them a healthier person. There's an element as well of when your future spouse is jealous, they may take a time out too. They may like to take a time out. They may end up taking a step back. So you'll know when they're jealous because they may go silent on you. There's something around the silent treatment here. I think your future spouse right now is probably going through a phase of learning how to self-soothe. I think your future spouse is somebody who is very aware that they have like a lot of passion within them, which comes out in many different directions. You know, it comes out in ambition, which is very positive. It comes out in passion in the bedroom and passion for you, which is very positive. But I think because of that, you know, every positive has to have its negative. They do have that like anger within them as well. And yeah, I think they're going through a phase at the moment where they're learning how to self-soothe because I do think they're going to rah like be very like uh, at first whenever like somebody crosses your boundaries whenever somebody you know tries it on with you they're going to be very you know very protective they're gonna they're gonna lead with force but then you may find that they actually take themselves away after that and take a time out and that's how you know that they're genuinely genuinely upset and that's when you come in you give them a kiss you give them a cuddle you give them a pep talk you remind them that they're the only one for you and that nobody will ever have your heart like they do and then that's when they may, you know, come back into the room, come back into the event, give the person that they've just had a bit of a heated argument with a handshake and everything will be fine, okay? So that's the energy I'm getting for you guys, pile number two. If you did like this reading, I do ask that you drop me a lovely, lovely like. If you like content like this, pretty please subscribe because it means that you get notified whenever I do post a brand new pick a card reading. Comment down below if you have anything to say at all. I absolutely adore reading your messages and your comments. It's um, one of my favourite parts of YouTube. It generally, generally is. Um, and yes pile number two. Take care of yourselves and I shall see you next time. Goodbye. Hello there fantastic pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Let's find out how your future spouse will express and show their jealousy. So you guys chose the six of wands. Now this is a fire energy. Leo in particular but we could be looking at Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. So much fire in today's readings. Every single pile has had like a heavy fire energy. Now bear in mind, you don't have to have a fire big three. You could have a cheeky fire stellium that you weren't aware of, or you could have some heavy fire in your chart. I'm feeling that you could have Mars in the ninth house, Sagittarius ninth house, or Sagittarius Mars as well. That's coming through very strongly here. Now there's something around you not surrendering to something. There's something around somebody or an organisation or a movement wanting you to surrender and you will not surrender. There's so much victory when you stick to your guns, when you stick to your vision, because you have a very strong third eye. So you have the gift of foresight. So I think you think it's quite cheap and quite... Um, comical when people advise you when it comes to your future when you can see further than they can 
I think there's an element of you being like, why would I do that? I know myself better than you do. Like, I know that I don't want to do that thing. Why are you telling me that I need to do that thing? Kind of makes me think that potentially you've got a very um, controlling family or you've got something around you where they expect you to conform in some way. I don't know whether you're the scapegoat. I don't know whether you've done something very different to the rest of your family and whether you're the one who... <laughs> it's like... It's like you have a dream and the dream is very out there to the normal person and you're just waiting to succeed when it comes to that dream so that you can prove everybody wrong and I do feel with the six of wands here the fact that you chose the six of wands the, the card of victory you are going to succeed you are going to be victorious you are going to get that notoriety that you deserve because you stuck to your guns now I don't know whether you are a year of the horse so a Chinese year of the horse or whether your future spouse is going to be a Chinese year of the horse there's something around you either wanting to travel or wanting to move countries or wanting to move, you know, quite far away if you are residing or wanting to move somewhere in the same country. Like the kind of distance that warrants a plane trip here. There's something around your hair as well. You could be Leo rising. Because like I'm seeing like very nice hair, very nice flowing hair, very thick hair. Could be brunette, could be blonde. I want to say you could be brunette, but you could have recently had some like blonde highlights in your hair. I'm seeing that very strongly here. Or you may be thinking about having blonde highlights or being blonde with darker, darker lowlights. What they be called lowlights? I don't know. I don't know these things. I should. I'm a female, but I don't know these things. I don't know whether you're saving at the moment because I keep hearing the word nest egg and I'm sure there's a phrase saying storing away a little nest egg. I don't know whether that's a phrase or whether that's the same, but I'm just hearing nest egg, which makes me think that potentially you are saving money at the moment. Maybe you're saving money because you are planning on moving or traveling. You're so ambitious. And don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't achieve the things that you want to achieve. And that's coming out so flipping strongly. You really were gifted with this ability to foresee, with this foresight. You have the ability to see things at a bird's eye view. Where most people, they're looking at their situations from the ground and then they can only see what's in front of them. You can see the whole situation. You could be the kind of person that people come to for advice. Even advice where you're just like, whoa, I've got no experience in this. Why are you coming to me? Okay. Springs. Springs. Something about springs. I don't know about that. You're just very bouncy. You're very magnetic. People love your energy. There's like a bubbliness to you. Are you avoiding love at the moment? Do you realise that you're avoiding love at the moment? Are you being very defensive when it comes to your emotions? I feel like potentially you've been in a situation where you have been restricted with regards to love. Like you're naturally really bouncy, but maybe this person really did kind of like put the water on your fire or put your fire out. Okay, it's bizarre because I was picking up on all of this very fiery kind of freedom kind of energy. Your energy at the moment is very like, it's a bit restricted. I just want to get one more card for this. Oh, okay, it's that one. <laughs> Oops, a daisy, eight of cups. Yeah, it looks like you've walked away from a situation that was making your energy very stale very stale and I think at the moment you're very defensive when it comes to love That's my stomach rumbling. and I think rightfully so to a certain extent but I think this is coming out because spirit is saying that you're blocking yourself from your future spouse or maybe you need to walk away from something maybe you haven't fully walked away from something yet seven of swords coming out I don't know whether there's somebody in your vicinity that's keeping hold of you it's like, it's, I feel like this could actually be an ex. And then like keeping hold of your energy, rather than keeping hold of you, rather than saying, you know, you're still mine or I want you back. It's like they're holding on to your energy. And they're hoping that you won't notice and they're hoping that you won't meet anybody else. It's like they're doing a form of like magic on you, but it's not, they don't necessarily have to be able to do magic to be able to succeed with this. It's like they've got it so strong in their mind that they're gonna win you back that they're kind of stunting your energy here. There's an element of you 
Jupiter's coming up very strongly. Sagittarius is very, very strong for you. The star card. There's an element of needing to let go. Spirit is saying that the tower moment has happened. It's time for you to fully let go. Guys, I really feel like you guys are going to be moving overseas or you're going to be traveling soon. This is so, so strong in the cards. And I think you've had these dreams to travel, these dreams to expand in some kind of way within this relationship. And I think you just kept being given false hope within this relationship. And this person just left you hanging all of the time. Your dreams are about to come true. But you've got to follow that foresight. I think you're going to meet your future spouse in work capacity. There's going to be some kind of communication with regards to work or at work here. This could be messages back and forth. But I think with the High Priestess, it's going to take a while for you to actually know that this is a romantic connection here between you both. I think it's going to take a while for you guys to kind of like move past the professionalism for some reason. It's like when you guys talk at first, or the first time that you guys communicate, you're using your heads too much, you're overthinking everything. You're not speaking from the heart, you're not speaking from your emotions, you're literally trying to kind of like restrict your emotions and restrict your feelings and just think through logic. How can I make myself seem interested but without showing any emotion so that they don't know that I'm interested? Like, it's like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's actually ridiculous how you meet your future spouse because you're doing this kind of back and forth messaging in this very logical and calculated way for quite a while, pile number three. I think it reaches a point where one of you bears their soul to the other person. And I think it's very like matter of a fact, like under the moon for some reason. Maybe you talk of an evening Maybe it's under a very specific full moon, because I know as I filmed this, we had the Pisces full moon yesterday, which was intense, very deep, very emotional. And today I feel very like hungover from there. Like, I feel like I can barely communicate. Hence why I've had to do this reading in a different style, because I'm like, I just need to do it on the fly for some reason, because anything concise and anything organized at the moment, I just can't do it. It's just not, it's just not working out for me. Like Pisces energy cannot be contained. I cannot be contained today. But it's like somebody bears their soul under the moon. Maybe under some very intense, like, moon energy. And in that moment, whoever does that, like, slip, that slip of emotion, or slip of bearing their soul, thinks that they've killed the connection. They think, well, that's it. I've lost this person as a colleague, or I've lost this person as a friend. But it ends up opening up a door to the four of wands. 11, 11, four of wands. Brand new beginning, happiness. A love that's worth celebrating. So, yeah, it looks like you and your future spouse meet through work and then it's communication between you both that finally solidifies your connection. Now, what? Sorry, my stomach's going absolutely crazy. What makes your future spouse jealous? What is it that triggers your future spouse's jealousy? Dramatic. Not right. I've just... I've just picked up this deck and yeah, I've messed up just because Pisces for me yesterday. I'm, I'm really strong. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get the cards in properly. But look at the top of the deck. That wasn't flipped over when I picked the deck up. I'm sure it wasn't. I'll have to look back on the camera. But as I grab the decks, dramatic has just flipped over. Okay. Dramatic, right. What makes on the threes future spouse jealous, please? What is it that makes part number three's future spouse jealous? Oh, okay. Okay. Right, yeah, they want to come out. They flipped out in a very odd way, but I'm telling you, with this full moon energy, everything is a little bit odd. What makes them jealous? Okay. Dramatic silence, unfinished business and sidetracked. Your future spouse is cute. <laughs> really cute. You could be the kind of person, when you are upset, or when you're annoyed, maybe you go silent. Maybe you're the withdrawer, not the pursuer, is what I want to say. 
So the pursuer, when there's some kind of conflict, will pursue the situation, will go in on the situation, will want to empathically sort the situation out, and the withdrawal will want to withdraw to keep the peace or to process what's going on before they jump in and actually start pursuing themselves. So I think you could naturally be very withdrawal when it comes to these more awkward situations or fiery situations. And it's not because you don't care. It's not because you're trying to like play a game. It, it's most certainly been built in your childhood for some way. Maybe when you were a child and there was something, some conflict arising, you may have had to stay more silent and withdraw to stay safe because you felt like that was the main way that you were going to stay safe in those situations. But in a whole, as an adult, maybe you are the withdrawer within a situation. Maybe you are somebody where if there's conflict, it's like, whoa, like, I need a bit of time to, like, process this. Or you may just be somebody who, like, just outright wants to avoid any conflict whatsoever. I mean, I can definitely resonate with the withdrawer, in particular within connections. But I withdraw to process, and then I want to pursue. So a withdrawer doesn't always have to be, like, a full-on 100% withdrawer. The withdrawer can become the pursuer as well. Anyway, I feel like I spoke about that for way too long. But I think it's when you withdraw with any situation, okay? It doesn't even have to just be conflict. It can be any situation. You could be the kind of person where it's like, hey, should we go on holiday? Should we go to this particular hotel? And you need to withdraw for some time to think about this. Now, I think with you, <laughs> and then obviously your future spouse is just like, well, I guess I don't want to go on holiday then. But really, you're just withdrawing to process. And I think it just so happens that with your future spouse, you are that withdrawer. You are the person that needs to step back and process things. And that is the thing that triggers your future spouse the most. They're somebody who naturally struggles when people withdraw because they have a very, very good imagination is what I want to say, a very creative imagination. And in these moments of withdrawal, they, um, their mind runs wild. Their mind runs to the dramatic extremes. Well, I guess part number three wants a divorce now. I guess part number three doesn't want to go on holiday with me. I guess part number three doesn't want to move in with me now. And it's like, no, like part number three is just thinking about the most practical way to do these things. And these moments of withdrawals make them very jealous. I think for you guys, part number three, you're going to know when your person is jealous because they are going to, they're going to verbalize it. Part number three, when your future spouse is jealous, you're going to know because they're not going to leave you alone. These are the moments where they're going to organise things for you guys to do together. Even if it's inappropriate or at an inappropriate time. They're going to be leaving you messages. They're going to be hitting up your phone. They're going to be somebody who, I think they can verbalise their feelings. I think they're very good at verbalising their feelings. We've got very strong water energy with your future spouse. I've got Cancer here. I've got Pisces here. But I don't think you're ever going to have to worry whether you've annoyed this person or not, or whether you've made this person jealous or not, because they are going to verbalise it and it's going to make it a lot easier for you to be able to iron these situations out. Where if they just did the silent treatment as well, you may not know for a very long time that somebody has upset the other person or somebody has been jealous about the other person. I think your future spouse sees you as somebody who is very, very, very desirable to the point where you can have anybody you absolutely want. And I do think that your future spouse is going to be like punching a bit. <laughs> you are going to be like the prize in the marriage. And I don't think you mind that. I think you're somebody who's like, yeah, <laughs> so I flipping should be. So when it comes to your future spouse worrying who you could, you know, go off with, I mean, there's a whole sea of people that you could go off with because you can get absolutely anybody you want. Your future spouse is sweet, super, super duper flipping sweet here. And they love you so much. And I think when they fall in love, they give their heart, they give their soul, they give everything. They actually sacrifice a lot of themselves for love. And this is why this dramatism comes out because when it comes to you guys separating, it's like painful for them, like physically painful for them. It's not pride when they're jealous of you. It's not in their head like, oh my God, well, that makes me look like a twat kind of thing. It's here. It's heartbreaking when you make them feel jealous and they just can't help. They just be like, what are you doing? What's going on? I need to know where you are. I need to know what you're doing. I need to know that we're okay. I can hear that a lot. I need to know that we're okay. At times when they're jealous as well, I feel like they're going to just pull ish out of the bag. <laughs> like, I know this sounds really like manipulative, but I mean it in the, like, the least manipulative way. 
But if they're jealous for any reason or they're worried that you're going to leave them or anything like that, they're going to organise like a shopping trip or they're going to book like a holiday or they're going to take you for a meal or they're going to come around and cook for you. Like, I actually, I had a relationship like this myself and I was very young. I was 18 at the time and he was a great guy, but we just weren't, you know, it just wasn't that, if you know what I mean. Like we were good together, but it just wasn't that. And at 18, I was looking for that wild romance. The wild romance that I ended up finding in a more toxic relationship, because that's always the way, isn't it? If you want a wild romance, you've got to remember wild romance, there's a word wild in there. It's going to be wild, okay? But every single time I pulled back from this person, they booked another holiday to kind of, to kind of trap me in the relationship. And it was great. We had great times when we went away with each other, but they had this way of just trapping me in with like acts of service, I want to say, and gifts and things like that. And I do think that this is this person's love language, like acts of service and gifts. So whenever you pull away, this person will pull those out. Okay, so I feel that very strongly. So you're going to notice when they feel jealous because they are going to yeah, gift you or they're going to perform some act of service for you. But all in all, they are generally going to tell you, I'm jealous. I'm jealous because there's no ego with this person. There's no pride with this person. There's just an authentic heart there. And that's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. There we go with coffee cup. Meeting, conversing, savouring the moment, feeling uplifted and friendship. Genuinely, that's what you guys are going to do. You're going to talk about it when they feel jealous. They're going to tell you. And you guys are going to be able to iron out any of these like jealousy kinks because there's honesty here. And I think with this person, when you meet them, there needs to be an element of you understanding your coping mechanisms in awkward situations or conflicting situations so that it eases them, so that they understand that you're acting the way that you are because that's just the way you deal with things, that's your coping mechanism, so that they don't have to feel paranoid like they've done something wrong or that you're just gonna up and leave every single time you need to go away and process. Because everyone should be allowed the time to go away and process, right? Um, so yeah, maybe when you meet this person, there needs to be that kind of explanation when you guys get serious. Okay, palm of three, I'm gonna leave that there. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it helped in some way. If it did, I do ask that you drop me a lovely little like down below and also comment down there as well if you have anything you want to say. I absolutely adore hearing from everybody. Make sure that you subscribe if you do like content like this because it's a way that you get notified when I do post a brand new pick a card reading, but also it helps the channel grow, it helps the video circulate, and it helps me bring these pick a card readings to you. And yes, part number three, take care of yourselves and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.